Hello and welcome to this video about Flowable and LDAP. I'm Valentin Zigner and I'm going to show you how you can integrate LDAP into your Flowable installation. To get started, I already prepared a Flowable installation. Here we can sign in with admin and test. Once signed in, we see here, for example, below contacts, all the different default uses which come with an out-of-the-box flowable in case you have the default uses enabled. And in addition to that, I also prepared an LDAP. I mean, you can use an LDAP or Active Directory or whatever kind of LDAP product you would like to use. I use here a simple LDAP with two users, Jane Doe. Jane is basically my admin user, so she's a member of the admin group. We have a few other uh, properties basically over here. And we have John Doe, he is from my reporting group. So um, that's configured over here. And then last but not least, we also have those two groups, CN equals admin and CN equals reporting. Now those I'm going to integrate into my Flowable application. To get started there, I prepared the development project. And before we look at that, I have over here basically the elder file. And that's exactly the file which uh, basically was used to create my my LDAP uh, directory here in the background. Now this custom development project for this scenario is not really needed. I am still going to show it to you in case you have one, since then you need to do a few changes. In case you are using some of the out of the box flowable artifacts, you can simply skip that and uh, move forward to the next uh, section. In here, I am first going ahead and adding some POM dependencies. So here we need to add uh, Java dependencies and we can find the correct dependencies in the flowable documentation. Therefore, you can go to documentation.flowable.com and then click there on developing, then backend, and then the developer guide on the left side. Uh, we are interested in security and below security in LDAP. Here's described basically which dependencies you need. Um, so we can simply take those uh, two dependencies here and copy them and go back to our IDE and just uh, put them here in our POM file and reload our Maven dependencies. Now, once that is done, our next step is to configure the LDAP properties that we are able to connect to the um, LDAP instance. Therefore, you can simply click here LDAP installation guide or in case you haven't watched the previous part, go to Administration, Installation, Detailed Installation of Flowable Engage or Flowable Work. And here you have on the right side now again LDAP, where we have a set of different properties. Now we don't need to have all of those properties, but for now I just simply copy and paste the list of properties over here and put that list of properties inside my application properties. You can use them in the same way also in case you um, have um, a Docker set up, then they are simply environment variables. And there are way, uh, a couple of different approaches how you can promote those properties to your flowable installation. Now we start with the basic properties here to connect to our LDAP and then we have a base. That base is uh, actually the same than the one we can see over here. So here we have DC equals how to comma DC equals flowable comma DC equals com. So we are going to add that here. DC equals how to DC equals flowable comma DC equals com. Then we have an LDAP URL. That's LDAP for me it's running on localhost on the default port 389. Uh, that host name is most likely different for you when you are not running LDAP on your local machine. And uh, when you are using a production ready LDAP, then you have most likely TLS enabled. So you would like to add an additional S after the LDAP. Now my username uh, is my admin. So CN equals admin comma, and then I need to add the um, DN from that user as well. So I just add yeah, basically DC how to DC global DC uh, com since that is where my admin is and my password is really secret. It's simply test. 
Um, the next uh, step here is to say that the service type is LDAP and that let Flo uh, will, will tell Flowable that we would like to start it with LDAP enabled. So starting from that point, when we set this property, it is going to use LDAP and connecting to LDAP when we are doing the uh, user and group lookup. Now, um, therefore, for the group lookup, it is going to use this set of properties and we first need to define our uh, query base. This base is based on the uh, Spring LDAP base, so we don't need to add the entire part here. Again, we can simply go ahead and specify the sublocation below that uh, location over here. Going back to our browser, we see that this is OU groups, so we can configure that one. And then we have, when we look at those two groups, here mainly the CN inside and the member, we do not have anything else there. Uh, also, we see that the object class is group of names. So we can filter basically by that when we are searching for groups. So let's go ahead and say here OU equals groups, which uh, gives us the base and then object class is group of names. And then the most other properties are CN, uh, besides the member, that one we simply have as member. Same configuration we also now need to do for our uh, users. That's a little bit complex since they have way, way more fields in my LDAP. So those are in OU equals users. Uh, we have the object class init org person or organizational person in here. We have a CN, SN, display name and so on. So we can start basically uh, configuring those. So let's say OU equals users, object classes, init org person. And then we have uh, the distinguished name that we can leave as it is. The member of uh, doesn't need to have the suffix. And then we uh, have the ID, which we are going to use our CN. We have a given name, SN, uh, here CN as well. And we have the uh, mail. Now, the next thing in here are those uh, additional information which we can provide. So in case you would like to have something mapped from your LDAP, which is not a default field inside Flowable, you can use that info name uh, map here to define your own fields, which are then an additional attribute for that user in Flowable. That can be, for example, handy when you would like to have an employee supervisor relationship where you can simply look up who is your supervisor for a given user. I do not have any of those in my LDAP, so I'm going to skip those now. And with that, we are coming to the next section, which is about the user definition. The user definition uh, can be, for example, based on any field. So we could say uh, we are using our given name in here and say the default user definition key is user default. And when we have uh, John, then we are going for user admin. And when we have Jane, we are going for user user reporter. Now at the end, that basically will not be really good for our production setup since everything depends on the given name or the first name of our person. So we wouldn't like to do that. There are alternative approaches which are specified inside the documentation. So let's go back there and scroll a little bit down. And one of those approaches is basically to map those user definition from groups. Now, in general, uh, it might be worth it when you don't know what a user definition is to also check out the video about user definitions. For us now, we just assume that we have the user admin and user reporting user definition, which come by default with Flowable. Now, our user default uh, user definition exists as well. And then we say that the uh, key mapping type, which we would like to have is based on groups. So we are looking up based on groups, what kind of user definition we have. And we have the group key, which refers then basically to the key of a group which we have up here. So basically whatever our CN of the group is, is what we need to specify over here and over here. So let's look up the CN of our two groups and CN equals admin and 
equals reporting. That makes life simple. We just say here admin and here reporting. And with that, we have uh, our user definition specified. In case you have a multi-tenancy setup, the next section here is relevant for you, where you can fill out uh, what your default tenant is, basically, uh, which kind of field of LDAP you are using for the tenant ID, and so on. Uh, I am using a single tenant, so I am going to skip that. And with that, we already have our configuration done, and we can restart our global work application to see if everything is working as we are expecting. So just to recap what we have done, we configured the configuration to our LDAP. Uh, we enabled LDAP that it is used with Flowable. We configured how groups are mapped to our uh, Flowable internal groups, how users are mapped. And then last but not least, we configured how we look up a user definition. Back to the browser, we can now log in to our global installation. And here I'm going to start with Jane Doe. Uh, when I sign in here, I see here already down there that I have the Jane Doe username and she is, she is an administration user. And uh, I can now go to the URL idm api slash current user. And that URL tells me basically what Flowable knows about that user and what we store there. So we see here um, the basic information like first name, last name, and display name, as well as email address. So all of them are correctly mapped. We also see that we looked up the user definition, so user admin, and that is based on the member group admin, which we are having over here. Based on the user definition, starting with 3.12, uh, we also have the groups from the user definition itself, which is global user and global administrator. And since, uh, since she is global administrator, she also has here admin type super admin. So here we really have an admin user. Going back to global work, when we now click on contacts, we also see John and Jane basically in here as our two users, uh, which we have over here, John reporting user and Jane an administration user. Now let's quickly also sign in as uh, John Doe. And once signed in as John Doe, we see that user interface here is restricted. We just have reports. We do not even see the contacts in here. Now, to connect your flowable design and flowable control to a um, flowable work with LDAP setup, you obviously need to now configure also a technical user in your LDAP, which you can use to connect uh, between those different applications. Since flowable control and flowable design are using an admin user uh, to connect through the REST API to your flowable work instance. So, with that, we already reached the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.